Hello and welcome to the 805 Focus, where we focus on the people, topics and events that matter to the South Coast. Here at Santa Barbara TV, we are big supporters of local non-profit organisations. One such group that is doing some fabulous work here in Santa Barbara is the New Beginnings Counselling Centre. And I've got some great guests here today to help me understand and learn a little bit more about the organisation. Firstly, Christine Schwartz from New Beginnings Counselling Centre, Glenn Batchelor from Social Venture Partners, and military veteran Cal Carey. Welcome to the show, everyone. Well, Thank glad you. Glad to be here. Christine, what is New Beginnings and how did it come about? The New Beginnings Counseling Center is a community mental health organization and we have long history in the community uh, dating back to the late 60s, early 70s as uh, initially as a night clinic for mental health counseling. And over the years, the, the agency changed leadership and focus a little bit, always remaining at the core a counseling center. And in 2000, a group of uh, community collaborators got together, renamed the organization New Beginnings, and made our primary focus working with people who were vulnerable in different ways, primarily either through uh, mental health issues or through housing needs and we've developed into uh, core five programs, three of which focus on housing and two of which focus on counseling. In an average year, we, sh we serve over 17, 1800 people. Uh, we provide, this year, in the last year, we've actually provided over $125,000 in financial assistance to clients in helping them obtain housing, medical assistance, vehicle repairs, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah, we're, we're quite proud of that. Yes, I'm, I'm sure. Now, um, one program that is proving hugely successful is the Safe Parking Program. C can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure, sure. The Safe Parking Program uh, utilizes existing community resources in parking lots, empty parking lots at night um, that are either provided by the local government by for-profit organizations, non-profit organizations, faith-based organizations who allow us to utilize their parking lots at night to shelter families and individuals who are living out of their vehicles. We have at any, on any given night about 125 people who we are sheltering in the parking lots as well unfortunately we have at least another 70 who are on a waiting list. Um, so uh, you know it, it I'm not sure that many people in the community know just how many people are really on the verge of um, either losing their home, homes or have just lost their homes and have no choice but to live out of their cars in hopes of becoming stable again. And so what we do, not only do we provide shelter for people, but we provide assistance to get them back into traditional housing as quickly as possible. And just to be clear, it's sure. illegal to park in your car just anywhere that you want around Santa Barbara and live out of your car. So that's the service that you are providing, or one of them. Correct, yeah. We actually, we permit, we make sure everybody has um, a current license, registration, insurance, and we permit each vehicle. And, you know, we have uh, two monitors who safeguard and who check the, the lots on a daily basis, twice daily, to make sure that people are compliant with the program rules and we've had we've had little to no incident in over 10 years of, of operating the program. Yeah. People actually come from throughout the country and throughout the world um, to interview us about the program because of its success and it's a it's a very innovative very very successful program. That's fantastic and um, th with that or with that program and others that you sure. have going throughout the community where do you get your funding? Well, that's that. that it's a complex <laughs> issue. Um, primarily, our funding comes from from community foundations, uh, local supporters, uh, local philanthropists. We receive um, a significant portion from government funding, local, city, county, state, federal funding. We have um, the Department of Veteran Affairs provides us funding to work with veterans who are homeless. We also work a lot with uh, some local organizations, one of which is Social Venture Partners, which has been 
you know, tremendous in providing us both with financial and technical assistance that we wouldn't be able to otherwise obtain. Wonderful. So that brings me to Glenn Batchelor from Social Venture Partners. Glenn, tell me about your organization. Social Venture Partners is an international organization with um, chapters in most of the major cities in the United States, and we began here in Santa Barbara in 2008. And as Christine mentioned, what we primarily do is we provide some funding, but more, perhaps more important than that is we provide consulting work. We have lots of folks that have you know, business backgrounds and nonprofit organization backgrounds, legal backgrounds, and essentially what we try to do is help you know, really worthwhile organizations like New Beginnings to you know, do, you know, help them do more of what they do well. And so, you know, so we provide some of that's money and some of that's our time, but it's been, we're very selective about who we work with. And when we heard about New Beginnings, we just thought it was an absolute gem in the, in, in the community. And we were really surprised how few people knew about it. Mm. And, um, and we've been working together for about two years now. And I can say that we're more impressed with New Beginnings than we were two years ago. We were very impressed then. So they've made tremendous progress and they're helping so many people on so many different levels. Oh, that's wonderful, it's, and it, it's good to hear that you're happy where your money's gone. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, with the Safe Parking Program, you've heard about that. How does that make you guys feel when you hear of great stories like that? Well, I, I think it's, it's, first of all, it's very eye-opening to go out and go out in the evening, which yeah. we've done several times, and meet the folks that are living in their cars. Um, you know, very surprised at, you know, the circumstances and, you know, there could be people that live next door to any one of us and, um, and some very, very difficult situations where people really um, were on the precipice of, you know, you know, being either housed or not housed and, and ending up um, in their cars, which is very, very difficult. So uh, I think more than anything, it's eye-opening and how easily it could happen to almost anyone. And, and again, I think that makes it even that much more worthwhile, the work that New Beginnings is doing. Now, the safe parking program, being safe parking is wonderful, but the counseling sounds like that's crucial work because it's not just about getting off the streets. These homeless people need more help and that's what you guys are providing. Right, and I think that's one of the most impressive things about what New Beginnings does is not only the number of people that they're able to work with in the, in the depth of the different programs that they have, but the results that they get. I mean, a number of the folks for Safe Parking Program, for example, end up being housed every year, and many of them get jobs as well. Um, in the counseling program, um, there's statistics that show that over two-thirds of the folks that are counseled um, see significant measurable progress in only eight or ten weeks, which is really remarkable. And, and then in some of the other programs, they're able to work with folks in their housing to keep them in their housing for a year or two, very, very high percentages. So the results are really quite impressive as well. That is wonderful. Now, someone who has had some great success and has been really helped a lot from New Beginnings is our military veteran, Cal Carey. Welcome to the show, Cal. Thank you. Cal, tell me a little bit about how you came from being a 17-year-old boy entering the military to a 78-year-old man homeless. That's a long span. <laughs> I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and uh, grew up in essentially a poverty-ridden neighborhood. And I came to California after graduating from college and then on to seminary where I obtained a degree and was ordained a Presbyterian minister. Uh, my work there was with emotionally disturbed and mentally retarded children and adults. And I did that for approximately 25 years my trip to California changed emphasis and I began to develop uh, group homes in California for developmentally impaired adults. I also ventured into two unsuccessful business ventures, both at the Big Yellow House and in the development of a 
motel, the Flower Garden Inn, here in Santa Barbara. So you're a highly educated individual, helped the country hugely with your military service, given so much to the community, been a businessman, and you found yourself homeless. What was that like? This happens very suddenly. Um, you can go from a significant income, uh, successful business, or even service into the community. And one day you wake up and suddenly all of that income and background turns around and you're sitting there, what am I going to do? And my wife of 15 years, who uh, is such a beautiful person and so supportive, and we have three pugs, which we love dearly, uh, we were not able even to locate housing. So we spent a month in our car under the safe parking program of New Beginning and through that, I was introduced into a service of New Beginning, which was a service devoted to helping veterans uh, obtain housing. They did that. They financially supported that effort. And now uh, my wife and I and the three pugs are very, very happy in a small cottage in Los Padres Forest. We uh, will be starting up a new business in San Inez. And all of this goes back to that moment in time when, as I've said very often, New Beginnings and the Veterans Program was very much like a bridge over troubled waters. And that bridge provided me, my wife, to go forward and hopefully have a successful future as a result of what I call their ministry. That's just wonderful news, a wonderful success story. And I, I guess you have, you have many stories like this, Christine. We do, we do. We, um, it, it's, such a, it, it's, it's so rewarding to be able to provide um, assistance to people that are in immediate crisis and help them with something so tangible as housing or medical assistance or um, sheets for their bed or anything that they need to be able to just get back to some kind of normalcy in, in a traditional living environment. There seem to be a lot of misconceptions about homeless people. Um, it seems a lot of people think, look, if they just got up and went out and got a job, they'd be fine and it's their choice to live in a car you know they could they could set themselves up if they wanted to it doesn't quite work like that does it no you know, unfortunately um, and and this is not only a, a california phenomena I and mean, this is throughout the country we're finding that the um the expense of rent the living the, the monthly living expense far exceeds people's income and in, in Santa Barbara, for example, the expected percentage of you know, rent to salary is that people should um, you know, be able to dedicate 25% of their salary to, to their rent um, when people are only making the equivalent of 15%. And so people are just not having sufficient income to be able to afford to, to live here. And many people have lived here their entire lives. Their family is here. Their friends are here. And while many are willing and, and you know, we do relocate to areas north and south county, uh, many people, you know, are, have, have lifelong connections here that they have to break in order to find housing. Who are some of these homeless people? I'm not asking for sure, names. Sure, sure, sure. But, but who are some of these homeless people that end up on your doorstep asking for help? Sure. Uh, we have, we have um, one gentleman who was a very successful fashion photographer, a Vogue, Glamour, Cosmopolitan, another woman who worked in the mortgage industry 
and was was very successful, but lo eventually lost her home as a result of the downturn in the in the real estate. Um, we have people who work, you know, who are transportation um, service providers, who are retail people, who um, surgeons, doctors. We have, you know, often people come to us because they've had a health issue that has depleted their income, or they've lost their job, or there's some circumstance or crisis that's caused them to have an immediate loss of income and and they have nowhere else to turn. And social venture partners, I guess, are feeling pretty good where their money has gone. Oh, absolutely. Well, the money and the time, and we're just really humbled and proud to be able to help with such a great organization. And, um, you know, there's been you know, it hasn't been easy for nonprofits over the last four or five years, and um, not, and New Beginnings has really weathered that very, very well. Um, and their the staff and the board is very is a delight to work with, and it's and it's really warms the heart to go out and meet some of the folks that are getting some of the help that they are. Um, I've been amazed with some of the people I've met, like going out in the Safe Marking Parking Program, for example. I've met a, a second grade teacher who had medical difficulties that ended up homeless living in her car. I've met a 23-year-old woman with a, with a five or six-year-old and a two-year-old living in a tiny car, and on and on and on, stories like that. So it's not the stereotype that people oftentimes think in terms of the homeless. And, um, you know, we just couldn't be happier to be working with an organization, and I think Santa Barbara is very fortunate to have such a great organization here. We are very fortunate. Now, Cal, I am thrilled that you're at where you're at. I would like to just take a step back so people can understand. What did it feel like being homeless in your car with your wife and your three dogs, not knowing what the future holds? It's extremely fearful. Um, you get a sense of dread and you get a sense of no place to turn because your self-esteem also goes down along with the homelessness. So it's a time of um, going forward because if you don't go forward, you sink, as you well know. And I would take this opportunity to appeal to my buddies out there, veterans, uh, who are experiencing those same kinds of feelings to seek out the veteran program at New Beginnings because indeed they do affect miracles in people's lives and veterans are entitled to that and veterans should not be fearful of seeking out such help. And that's such an important message, Cal. I'm sure it's something that, as you said, veterans, we owe this to our veterans. Absolutely, absolutely. It is not a matter of seeking out welfare or charity. This is a matter of support that the veterans have earned through their service. Uh, my brother was killed in Korea as a result of friendly fire. And ever since that time, I have in many different ways tried to compensate for that loss. And veterans today all have their own reasons we're trying to compensate what went on in their lives. Some of it's very, very tragic, and some of it we see evidence right here in Santa Barbara of veterans who have gone to the bottom but haven't been able to find a way up. That way up, I am convinced, is through new beginnings and the wonderful program they have in behalf of veterans. That's wonderful. What a what a strong message! It's wonderful to hear that. My my, we have incredible staff. Um, one of our program coordinator is a veteran herself, a young woman who's in her late twenties, who is just fantastic. They, they they work tirelessly. They I I we were joking 
um, we were getting emails at three o'clock in the morning from, from one of them and, and it just shows their dedication and the efforts that they, that they undertake to help get people housed. And I, I think one of the, the comments that I've received most from, from veterans as well as from the other programs that we have is that people are, are really surprised that they can come and receive assistance and they don't need to do anything in return. It, it, the, you know, the, the help is non-judgmental. It is unequivocal. You know, we will serve anybody regardless of their ability to pay. And people are so grateful just to have somewhere to go to get help. And, and you know, whether it be through writing grants for individuals, providing a safe place for parking, um, providing rental assistance, we, we really do mental health counseling. Um, I think we really do provide a, a safety net for people who would have otherwise nowhere else to turn. Absolutely. Well, we are just about out of time, but before we go, I, Cal has shared with us, I'd love to hear from you, Christine sure. and Glenn, what would you like viewers to take away from today's conversation? To be aware of new beginnings in, the, in what it's providing to the community, which is really a profound you know, level of service in the community. Um, and a couple of things that we haven't mentioned so far today is number one is that a lot of the counseling is provided by master's level and doctoral level right. students in the area. So this, is, this organization is helping to create the next generation of counselors, which is a big service to the community beyond the direct service that they provide to their clients. And then the second thing I'd like to say, because there's so many really outstanding organizations in Santa Barbara that help folks, but New Beginnings is incredibly cost efficient as well. Um, all the services that we've talked about, they, they, they do it for just a few hundred dollars per client, which is highly, highly cost efficient. And the reason for that is because largely they're using student counselors and the safe parking program they're using, they're, they're getting the parking places for free. So their main cost components are, are free primarily. So it's a highly cost efficient, highly results oriented and just, you know, touches so many people in the community. We have made a point of really focusing on program and making sure that we did everything we could to prevent from cutting services and we have not cut any services. In fact, we have increased services. We've increased the capacity of the organization to provide the services. We have worked with community collaborators to become more efficient and effective and collaborative and, and I think we've done a tremendous job with that. We've had a lot of assistance from, you know, foundations in the community, um, donors, collaborators, and we really, we appreciate that. And I think that we're doing a fantastic job and I hope that, that you all can continue to support us to do more of it. Okay. How can people support you if there are viewers out there today and sure, they, sure. they want to s provide support? Um, we're where would they go? How do they do it? Uh, they, can, they can visit our website. Uh, we are always welcome and, and encourage donations. However, we also have a wish list of items uh, for clients as well as for the agency. And you can find information about that on the website as well. You can simply call up and, and ask us. Stop by and visit the agency. We, we have a lot of friendly staff and people willing to, to tell you more about our work. That's wonderful. Uh, and and I, I think the one thing that I would add also is that, if, you know, because many people, it's difficult to, you know, you know, to support from a funding standpoint, but everybody can give their time. And, yes. and there's, you know, ample opportunity to volunteer with all these programs that we've heard about today. And I would ask folks to get involved and volunteer, even if they can't provide funding. I think it's well worth it for the, for the community. Absolutely. Well, it's been wonderful having you here today. Thank you for joining us, Cal, Christine, and Glenn. And as Christine said, you can go to their website to learn more information and to find out how you can help. And if you'd like to find out more about TV Santa Barbara, you can check out our website at tvsb.tv. And please join us next time on the 805 Focus, where we focus on what matters to the South Coast. I'm Christine Davis.